so we're now at the part of the segment, which is kind of half half of my, my my favorite part because I think these mis miscellaneous issues mm -hmm. that we can speak about that um, aren't really discussed at length. Yeah. Um, and I think today we are discussing the slaughtering of animals, um, which is great. And of course, we're going to be welcomed by Sayyid Mohsin Shah. Thank you very much for your time. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank how you for you having me. You're welcome. Right. And how, is, how are you, Sayyid? I'm yeah. very well on this lovely morning here in London. It is. I've got the river behind me. so nice. And <laughs> cold <laughs> London. Indeed. It it is cold. Cold. It's London. home. It's home. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, we had you in our previous um, morning barakah. We, we very much uh, enjoyed your presence there. And, and I very much. very much, as the first episode, I look forward to um, the remainder of, of our time with you. Um, you. Yeah, well, we'll be picking your brains for lots of topics. Yes, I'll do my best. And um, yeah. so today we were thinking, well, we were going to discuss about um, slaughtering and halal meat. Yes. Um, and we're quite fortunate, aren't we, here in the mm. UK, especially in London and then around the UK. Plenty of... Uh, well, you know, um, outlets for purchasing. So, what are the laws around halal, and hmm? you know, what's? I guess there's a there's a there's a criteria, don't we? That we have to there's a there's like a, a stringent criteria Indeed. for it to be mm. verified as halal. Yes. Um, Can't just go to a supermarket and pick up. Something. Yeah, exactly. And of course, uh, as Zara said, we're quite fortunate in the sense that there are many outlets that mm. follow a certain criteria. But from your perspective, in terms of the Rasala Amali of Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, what's what's the criteria for me to be halal? Sayyid. Um, yeah, like, like, like you said, halal meat, alhamdulillah, is uh, in here in the West, especially here in London, uh, readily available. Mm. Uh, different sort of mm. cuisines from different backgrounds, all uh, halal meat, and including very, very famous restaurant chains, uh, mm. if not a lot of um, chains. You mean non Muslim chains, right? Exactly, non Muslim wow. chains, which you know, we, we go to on a regular basis. But then also, you'd be surprised at other chains which people didn't think. Uh, would have mm. halal meat do actually offer halal service so it's really interesting um, how you know you can actually go to one of these Michelin star restaurants right. and actually book yourself halal meat but now you say that <laughs> yeah go on. I was gonna if, if they're cooking a chicken they say the chicken's halal but say the beef isn't the lamb isn't yeah no. is it okay to eat a place that is gonna have how do you know what their cooking practices are that the cross contamination and things like that with um, I mean we need to be concerned with that with seafood, you're okay, because there's nothing really nidges, uh with, mm. with, with seafood, mm. so you can just put it to the side. However, uh, with a uh, carcass of dead animals, um, you know, that is nidges. Mm. Um, so, yeah, if, if there's con cross-contamination, you will be penalised for that. Okay. It is haram. So this is, this is now reaching the outlet. Let's, let's, yes. let's take a step back to actually find out from... Okay, a so slaughtering from perspective, Indeed. yeah, from the beginning, so that <laughs> because all of this will make sense if we understand actually the criteria of Indeed. what is halal um, and what makes the meat halal, and then we can understand these outlets. I think we'll probably so. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. According to Ayatollah Sayyid Sadiq Shirazi, hafizullah, mm. he mentions six points in order for meat to be halal. Now I'm not going to go for which animals are halal, which ones are haram. I'm going to go through the slaughter process. Okay. So okay. first of all, the person who's doing the slaughtering has to be a Muslim. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, he can't be a Nasibi. Nasibi meaning what? An enemy of Rasulullah and his Ahlul Bayt. Mm. He can't be someone who has enmity towards them. So that's the first condition. The second condition is they have to use a sharp tool, preferably a steel sharp tool, so a knife. Um, if not a knife, then they can use another sharp object, uh, even like a stone or a rock that's sharp enough. They can use that. Uh, the third criteria is that the front part of the animal must be facing the qibla. Mm. So front meaning like the, the face, uh, the eyes, uh, the, the, the chest, mm. uh, the, the, the legs should be facing towards the qibla. Um, the person who's doing the slaughtering must say Bismillah. You have to say Bismillah, Allahu Akbar. Uh, even if you say it with the wrong intention. So let's say you are saying it because you're about to start a deed, not because you're actually uh, slaughtering the animal. That renders it haram. Mm. It has to be with the intention of slaughtering the animal. So, is there a, just just on that note? Is there a specific sentence that you say, for example, "Enwi," or uh, like with salah, for example, "Enwi asalli salatil whatever"? No, that's not or, necessary. With the knee, the or it's just the knee in the, in the, the, mind. In the, in the okay. mind. Okay. Uh, and then you go ahead with okay. the slaughtering. Uh, Bismillah, Allahu Akbar, or Bismillah is even fine. Just Bismillah, um, and then you will slaughter the animal. Um, the other criteria is that. There has to be movement after the actual slaughter. Right. Now, what, 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 what do we consider movement? 
movement of the legs is, is, is sufficient, even the blinking of an eye. Mm. So just, just that is, is, is sufficient. Mm. So it can't be like stone cold dead. As soon as you've done it, it's not moving. It's the, mm. There has to be some sort of movement. Um, and the final one criteria is that the four main arteries have to be cut. Um, it is makro to actually take it too far or to actually sever the head. Okay. So you have to be very, it's really, really technical. Yeah. Uh, it takes, takes a lot of skill and practice. Yeah. But so you've got the four main arteries. So, so it's like this, Muslim man, um, take the animal facing Qibla, um, Bismillah, uh, near Bismillah, four main arteries and movement after. Okay. So that's okay. how it is. So movement. like you said, it's quite technical. Um, and, and while we know six steps, and then those who are going to be doing it will know the steps. And my mind is racing for sort of all the criticism that we face from a Western perspective yeah. of, you know, how it's barbaric and how, you know, animal rights and things. So you said there's a sharp tool yes. and the four veins have to be just cut and then the movement. So is that to say, you know, the, the sharp tool sudden and then it's, you know... There's no pain. I mean, there, there is this campaign because they, they seem to think it's barbaric or they seem to think that mm. this slaughtering process brings harm to the animal, when in fact it doesn't. Mm. I mean, when you look at the mustahabat, you know, it's, it's um, mustahab to actually give water to the animal. Yeah. It's mustahab to comfort the animal, to lay it down mm. when you do it. It's mustahab um, to cover its eyes so it doesn't really? see anything. Yeah. So mm. what we see with, with, uh, like, uh, with the lambs and, and um, goats, is they have really long ears, so you'll see the the, the butcher. Uh, what he'll do is he'll use the ears to cover their eyes. Okay. While it's laying down, he'll cover the eyes and everything yeah. facing the qibla. And um, if you recite certain ayahs of the Quran, um, they do actually seem really, really calm. Oh, There's loads okay. of videos available yeah, on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. type up, you know, slaughtering halal animal, and and they'll, they'll show you Muslims actually slaughtering the animals, and the, the animal showing no form of resistance or okay. panic or anything like that. So, I've, I, 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 again, my mind is racing with a million questions, but with these outlets um, and then going to the supply chain, uh, and the beginning of the supply chain is basically these animals being slaughtered. From what you're saying, the process sounds a bit long. How, do they, how are they going to be make, able to make mass production of slaughtered halal chicken if it's going to be... Um, such stringent laws, but it takes time. I mean, I'm, I'm pretty sure they don't take every animal, put them down. I mean, it's not, yeah, them. it's not. It's not feasible to do it in such a manner. So I how mean, would how would if, then you, if you think about it, if you had the, like a chicken farm exactly. and you've got you got one order for a hundred chickens, are you going to be chasing a hundred chickens yeah. and so forth? There are measures put in place to um, help with mass um, demand. Um, for example, like stunning meat is is one one. Uh, tool you could say that they use mm. to you know make sure the chickens aren't running around everywhere to keep them in one place and to easily okay. help with but then stunning would mean that if you do slaughter the animal is it going to be moving after see that's another question so according to the maraja including Sayyid Sadiq is that if you stun the animal is it classified as dead or not and can we continue with the the halal the zabi process yeah um, he has said that as long as the animal hasn't died, you may continue. And it, the meat is halal. There's no issues okay, with but that. But the criteria said mm -hmm. that as, well, as soon as you make the incision and you mm -hmm. slaughter, there has to be some sort of movement. Indeed. Eyes, ears, Anything. hands, any, whatever. Any form of movement, yes. Okay, but if the, if the animal is stunned and mm -hmm. as soon as you slaughter it, there's no movement after. So how does that work? You're assuming that there's no movement. Okay. Have you seen a chicken being stunned no. or an animal being I stunned? I, I Are the lungs still breathing? You know, they're still guess, working. I guess so. so there is. Okay. I mean, it's not to say that when you stun an animal, there's no movement whatsoever. All right. Stunning an animal is, is, is essentially like putting them to sleep okay. or just dazing them for a bit. Okay. But there is still movement. Very, very minimal. Okay, cool. But there is still and that will be sufficient enough. And that would be sufficient right, cool. enough. Yeah. Yeah. As we said, even the blink of an eye is okay. sufficient. So, right. um, yeah, there is issue. Though. The issue actually comes with, does the animal die or not? Because mm. if the animal dies with the stunning, then that's haram. That's you can't haram. have that. Mm. You can't. And I'm, I mean, that's why we have certain uh, halal authorities who are actually trying to put a stop to stunning of chickens, mm. not of all animals. Because um, we were talking before, in this country, in England, it is mandatory to stun meat. Okay. It is mandatory to stun meat, especially when it's a cow or a lamb. Um, and the reason being is because sheer size and also to do with like, you know, you know Humanity and, and these, you don't want well, to cause. Do you uh, think? But do you think that we eat too much meat? You know, if you're saying about you know 
there's a hundred chickens. I mean, the amount we consume, do you think that there was, you know, for the six steps to be taken into consideration, that's a long, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a strenuous task. Are you task, so to go vegan? <laughs> no, there's a middle ground, isn't there? We yeah. maybe should studies, cut back. Studies show that the, one of the biggest contribution to global warming is the amount of animals being slaughtered. The sheer amount of animals that we have for uh, eating and consuming that these farmers and... And, uh, and they're pumping them with hormones to... That to, as well. To this is one of the growth. biggest contributions to global warming. Global mm. warming. Indeed, yeah. Mm. Uh, so we are eating too much meat. It's actually damaging the world. Wow. And our uh, health. Like and our health. We have plenty of hadith that, mm. you know, tell us not to, you know... Consume too much meat. Yeah, indulge in too much meat. Um, there's actually a disease called there's a there's a yeah, it's a disease called the uh, what was it? the king's disease gout basically oh yeah well, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah gout and they actually came from uh, very interestingly yeah. <laughs> we say this I actually got gout because oh. uh, I ate too much basically what happened was I was uh, I was um, at work I had this thing where I would buy processed meat and bread and a certain oh. type of cheese and I'd have that for lunch every single day. Um, mm. I'm quite weird like that if yeah. I stick to something that I like I just have it every single day. Um, Me too. And two months straight um, after that, I got this this weird like crystallization of a ball on, mm. in one of my joints in, in, the, in the foot. When I went to the doctor, I said it was gout. And then I read into it, and it's actually called the King's Disease because King Henry VIII, okay. um, he okay. had this all the time because he had yeah. excess, excess amount of meat. And that's when I thought, okay, I need to go back. Mm. Number one, from processed meat, and number two, I need to change up my diet a bit. I mean, yeah. I'm literally eating the same thing every single day for two months. Wow. Um, but yeah, but yeah we'll you're right. The it, it definitely, out for you. It, yeah, Poor it definitely Ali. exists. <laughs> but, you know, in a serious note. <laughs> Maybe I should. Actually, there's many different um, um, new diets, like flexitarianism, for mm. example, which is like the mix of meat and, and, mm. and vegan. Uh, no, vegan. It's a mix of meat and just normal vegetables and stuff. Mm. But it's not, not stringent. A balanced diet is exactly diet. that, isn't it? It's like, you know, I mean, I, I remember we were growing up, we would have vegetables in the week, and meat was something that, you know, the weekend, your family together. Quality, yeah. And it, it's nice, and I think, you know, every night to have heavy meals and, you know, chicken, meat. This you know, my, my dad says now uh, the price of vegetables have gone up so much, you might as well eat meat. <laughs> <laughs> that is, is, what is, would you say about um, supermarkets that sell yeah. um, halal? Do you think that's quite a safe, like, you know? I think so. I mean, to be honest, when it comes to inquiring about halal meat, mm. Um, you only inquire if you're not sure if the meat is halal. Uh -huh. So maybe you go to a, a place where there's no halal certificate or a, in any indication that mm. this is halal meat, you'd ask. Now, I think it's, it's you know, wise for someone to be a little uh, cautious mm. and also to inquire. But I believe also that there's limits to inquire. Now, according to the fiqh, the ahkam of uh, Ayatollah Sayyid Salik Shirazi, um, he says that you know, it is sufficient for you to ask the Muslim is this meat halal? And if the Muslim says, yes, it is, that, that's your, you could say, your um, obligatory investigation complete. Mm. Um, and uh, mm. you don't need to take it any further. Right. You know, uh, a lot of people do actually want to take it further. Yeah. You know, they'll speak to a Muslim. Oh, can I see your certificate? Mm. Or what about this? Or what about that? Is it stunned or not stunned? Um, I mean, the worker wouldn't know that, though, would he? Indeed, the worker wouldn't know that, but I, I feel more, it's, it's, you know, you're, you're kind of challenging the integrity of mm. your fellow, you know, brother in, in, in Islam. And I think sometimes it can get a little embarrassing. But however, how bad have, has the world or the Muslim community got that Muslims have to ask whether the meat well, is halal I mean, if, or not? If you, if you think about it, I mean, there's a stringent criteria, number one. Number two, every single corner shop is now halal. Yes. Um, Chicken shop so then, especially. then, then there's uh, there must be some sort of questions raised as to where are these where are they getting this meat from, um, and I think there there is a certain you know there is a certain ah and there's also a bad reputation on on certain outlets even like normal like chicken chicken shops just mm. on on the high street. Um, when you actually delve into it, it's not really halal. They get it from some weird guy in in Brighton or something like that, mm. and then. Then, then the whole question arises of, okay, if this person's not halal, is he getting the same meat as this person? Yeah, the source. And yeah. then it's just all about the source, really. Actually, the question that we mm. had today, and I was, I'm going to just quickly read it, because it is the topic that um, yeah. Ali's just raised now. Um, someone written in Islam, Sayyid, I have recently moved to a new city, and there are not many Muslims here. There is one halal butcher shop, and I'm not sure if I can trust them or not. Is it okay to ask for their certificate and where they get the meat yeah. from? And yeah, that's somebody in, um, in London. Is perfectly acceptable, mm. and in, uh, you know I, I would actually encourage it that if you have 
some sort of doubt or you have some sort, you know you're not too confident mm. then yeah do investigation there, there, there's no harm in it mm. but just be kind and, and be you know cautious that you don't want to offend anybody now if you go and you ask a muslim and you say oh, is your stuff is, is halal or not where do you get it from then maybe you could go in your own private time and google where this this you know mm. the outlet is or where this uh, abattoir is and whether it's halal or not maybe contact the halal authorities and say look yeah. uh, there's this halal shop um, is it actually halal or not mm. or they get their meat from this abattoir do you or, you know verify that this is halal or not you know th th this is mm. this is perfectly acceptable what are people looking for in a certificate so you know you get yeah. stamp and it says halal i mean uh, d d there are many different uh, halal authority, food authorities and each one has their own criteria what is halal or not some right. may i know that there's a very famous one that uh, they do not uh, accept stunned chicken mm -hmm. as um, halal. So they want purely non-stunned chicken uh, slaughtered in a halal manner and they verify that as halal. There's others that will actually accept um, stunned chicken. Stun chicken yeah. who, who are, who, which um, school of thought are they following? Are they sort of speaking for, knowing that Muslims you know, constitute such different schools of thoughts? Shia, Sunni, you know, etc. Or are they think, looking at one particular... I think there wasn't an issue of stunned meat 50 mm. years ago. Maybe the demand wasn't so high. Mm. Um, and I think maybe once stun, stunning was introduced into the actual technique of slaughtering animals, even in a, in a halal manner, uh, and when Muslims discovered this and that, oh, there could be some sort of issue in regards to stunning meat. I mean, that's when the investigation was taken. Mm. Uh, and, and through the study, they, they you know, discovered that there is a small chance, it's not saying that it is 100%, I think it's very, very, I think it's less than 10% that the animal could actually die from um, the stunning right. um, before it is put to the knife. I don't know how much time we've got left, yeah. um, probably not much, but um, I did want to quickly cover the aspect of the spiritual impact on a person. Mm -hmm. Obviously we're physical and spiritual. We go to a shop, we think it's halal, we're assured it's halal, we eat. Um, and perhaps it's cross-contamination, perhaps, you know, the people that prepare it are not Muslim. How is that impacting us? Um, or we're unknowingly eating haram meat, thinking that it's halal. I mean, it's a really good question because you've got Islamic law on one side and you've got spirituality on another. I mean, if you were not aware um, and, you know, obviously you can't really go and investigate and have a look at the kitchen to see if people are wearing gloves or not or mm -hmm. they're using the same pots and pans or utensils if there's cross-contamination, there's cross-contamination but it's not wajib and mandatory upon you to go investigate that Your, um, what is obligatory upon you is just to inquire whether the meat is halal or not and that is sufficient because Islam is a religion of ease and peace mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's not about going and questioning people's integrity no. and things like that however, put that aside mm -hmm. of, of what is mandatory on you and, and your ahkam Let's look at the spiritual aspects. Yes, definitely, there is a, an effect on your spirituality when you have and consume um, haram content. Um, the, the effects can last up to like 40 days, they say. And what kind of effects can we sort of... You know? I mean, it, it impacts the soul, really. And obviously, it, it will cause you know, things like um, you to become immoral. Mm. It could cause things like, um, I can't remember the word, we could say munafik in, in Arabic. Mm. I don't know what you call it in English, but Hypocrit like, hypocritical, that's it. Yeah. Hypocritical, um, you know, and, and, and other sorts of it's hard, diseases it's of, of personality. Yes, Become. depending on what you eat. Mm. Um, and, and even like, you know, God forbid anyone that touches alcohol. Um, and we know that, especially in certain uh, countries and cuisines, they do add a bit of alcohol while they're cooking. Yeah. Um, you know, that, if you consume that, your, your prayers aren't accepted for 40 days. Yeah. But I heard that with the alcohol in, in cooking, it evaporates, and then depending on how much they put in, but if, say, it was a drop, um, it evaporates because of the cooking temperatures and things. So does that still apply to...? What you really need to investigate mm. is, number one, alcohol is anal najasa. So whether it touches... I'm not, I'm not justifying, I'm yeah, just, you yeah, know, yeah. just... <laughs> no, you're playing devil's advocate, that's, that's, that's fine. Mm. When you pour alcohol into food, uh, alcohol is known as anal najasa. Mm. It will contaminate the food around and make it najis. Mm. Um, you'll have to refer to yeah. a scientific expert. <laughs> yeah, I'd <laughs> love to. I'd love to spend more time on this. And I think that there's again, there's so many directions we can take, especially when it comes mm. to halal. Yes, it needs more than the specific segment. But in terms of understanding the criteria, yeah. um, understanding the outlets, what we can do, and especially answering the question of, for example, going into a new city or actually going to any city and asking for. Um, a, a, mm. a certain certificate is, I think, sufficient enough, and 
or if you want to do your own personal investigation, which is fine. Yeah. So, um, just don't offend people. That's, yeah. that's the main right thing. We, need yeah. To, yeah. we really need to keep our akhlaq and, and not to disrespect or yeah. challenge someone's integrity. Yeah, you know? yeah so um, again, I'd love to spend so much time on, on, on this subject, but of course, time is, is of issue. So uh, many thanks for your time today. No Say, worries. Thank you for having me. Really thank appreciate you. it. You're welcome. Um, thank and for you. myself and Zara, we will see you on Friday, which will be the next episode. Um, we'll have another guest. We'll Stay tuned to know who that is. Uh, but in any case, uh, I'm hungry now actually. Yeah, inshallah, you have a blessed <laughs> day uh, and we look forward to seeing you very soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.